do, 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 Josh Review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to another album review with me, Joshua Smith, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, now, I don't actually have this album yet, I do plan on getting it soon, but I wanted to do it because I've been wanting to do this one for a, a while. And this album is Starbomb by the band Starbomb, which consists of Aaron Hansen, Danny Sexbang, and Ninja Brian. It was released uh, December 17th, 2013. And some chart information about it, it peaked number 12 on the U.S. Billboard Top uh, Independent Albums, uh, number 1 on the U.S. Billboard Heat Seekers Albums, number 6 on the U.S. Billboard Top Rap Albums, and number 1 on the U.S. Billboard Top Comedy Albums. And it's um, it doesn't have a label, uh, it was self-published, so yeah. Anyways, without further ado, let's get this started. First, I must put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. There is a lot of incredibly inappropriate content on this album, and a lot of that will be reflected through this review. So, you have been warned. For the few of you that have probably never heard of Aaron Hansen or Danny Sexbang or any of these people, uh, Aaron Hansen is better known uh, by his internet alias Ego Raptor, and he's actually an animator that makes videos about video games, while Danny Sexbang and Ninja Brian are the creators of a band called Ninja Sex Party, and for about two years Danny uh, has joined Aaron on uh, his Let's Play channel called Game Grumps, uh, where they typically play, do nothing but play video games and crack jokes. Soon after Danny joined, uh, the two decided to come together with Ninja Brian to create a uh, rap album that referenced video games, and this band was called Starbomb. Yes, that's right, each song is a reference to different video game series, Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Bros., Sonic, Final Fantasy, Metroid, and so on. Aside from the obvious rap aesthetic of this album, most of the, most of the instrumentals are done completely by Ninja Brian, uh, and follow a distinct synth-pop style, and rarely deviates from this form for the majority of the album. Now let's dive into some of these songs. The album starts out with an intro uh, by the gang talking about how, you know, parroting stuff isn't against the law, and basically prepping you for what the album has in store, and then BAM, we're at our first track, I Choose You To Die. I Choose You To Die is a parody of the Pokemon series, and the title itself is a parody of the phrase, I choose you whenever a trainer sends out their Pokemon. It's an upbeat synth goodness song with uh, Aaron rapping the entire story and Danny sarcastically chiming in with layered vocals in the chorus, as it actually tells quite a dark story, uh, which can be said about the majority of the song from this album anyways, where Ash Ketchum has defeated the Elite Four and has become fat and depressed as he no longer has anything to do. So he gets a bright idea to physically abuse his Pokemon as if sending them into Pokemon battles wasn't harsh enough. He gets arrested for Pokemon abuse, gets bailed out by Pikachu, and in an act of revenge, Pikachu shoots Ash in the testicles. This is the kind of stuff that you can expect on the album. It's kind of like if you fused rap, synth pop, robot chicken, or South Park humor and video games together, this will be the outcome. The next track is perhaps the first that deviates from the main synth pop formula. Luigi's Ballad tells the story of Luigi, played by Danny, trying to tell Princess Peach, played by guest vocalist Rachel Bloom, as Mario, who is played by Aaron, constantly keeps ruining Luigi's chances by trying to woo Peach by making disgustingly sexual references. How it deviates is that at the beginning and near the middle it's slower with more poignant instrumentation and Danny doing his usual harmony vocals to create a sense of beauty and passion, right before Mario comes in and crashes the party. It's fair to note that the majority of the songs here have Aaron rapping and Danny singing on the chorus. Some other over-the-top stories include Mega Marital Problems, which is Mega Man and his wife. Uh, okay. Having problems in their marriage and misogyny is brought into play as Mega Man's wife is basically a whore who is not satisfied with the sex that Mega Man is giving her, and she's willing to get it from just about anyone that can give her a good time, including Mega Man X. The Book of Nook has Tom Nook from the Animal Crossing series reinforcing the fact that he is pretty much the boss of the town and will get his payment no matter what. Sonic's Best Pal, which may be the most extreme tracks in the album, has Sonic being as cheerful as ever while Tails is a total crack and PCP addict who isn't afraid to execute someone and break their legs if they so much as look at him wrong. It blends elements of typical pop in the Sonic verses and then a heavy metal style in Tails' verses. It's also fair to mention that the majority of the jokes on this album are dick jokes, almost constantly talking about sex in some way, shape, or form. For a lot of people, this kind of ruined the album for them, as they don't like, you know, make any other clever jokes besides those. But if you're a fan of Game Grumps, like I am, you would know that the majority of the jokes made um, on the show are dick jokes. So it's a, it's typical Game Grump fare, really. They transferred that feel of Game Grumpsy over, over to the music world with Starbomb. Um, so it really represents the inappropriate nature of the group itself. A couple of my favorite tracks were It's Dangerous to Go Alone, which is a Legend of Zelda parody with a super cool funky groove, and the basis of the story is that Link is trying to make his way to rescue Princess Zelda, while the old man in the cave from the very first Zelda game is constantly trying to rape Link. It escalates to the point where Link yells at the old man and shoots arrows at him. It features some of the more unique instrumentals and funnier jokes in the album. Some others were Rap Battle, 
Ryu vs. Ken, a parody of Street Fighter, which is definitely more of a hardcore rap track uh, despite the highly rhythmic synthesizers. Ryu, played by Eren, challenges his friend Ken, who is played by Danny, to a rap battle, and it quickly becomes clear that Ryu has rap skills, while poor Ken does not. Another was Crashervania, an obvious period of Castlevania, where we see Dracula trying to have a party in his castle with all of his undead friends, while Simon Belmont keeps crashing the party to essentially slaughter everybody, and why? Because he wasn't invited to the party. Oh, okay. Finally, there's the simple plot of Final Fantasy VII, which is probably one of the more cinematic tracks in the album. The story is that there's this late night show called Talking Video Games, where the subject is games with simple plots, and that should give you an idea of the hilarity within the song right off the bat. Cloud Strife then goes on, and on, and on, giving a synopsis of the plot of the game, while the host keeps trying to cut Cloud off to give the other guests a chance to speak. Like It's Dangerous to Go Alone, it has a cool, smooth, funky groove with elements of jazz even. It's probably the best beat on the album, and also one of the few tracks in the album that doesn't constantly make d dick jokes. Overall, this album is hilarious, uh, with some really good beats and even better vocals. It's incredibly uh, clever and creative, no doubt. Uh, the games chosen for parodying were games that many people are familiar with, and some of the other tracks on this album, like Regretroid and Kirby's Adventures in Reamland, only add to the comedic and overly sexual nature of this album. Um, in the outro of the album, they were already plugging their upcoming album that was uh, already in the works, so it's clear that they're hard workers when it comes to making these albums. Aaron isn't a totally bad rapper, and of course Danny is quite experienced uh, with mu uh, music and everything, so his vocals are on point for the majority of the album. I can't lie, sometimes the dick jokes can become overbearing, especially if you're listening straight through this album, but you kind of have to keep in mind that, again, a lot of the jokes made on this album were typical of, of the people involved. That's not exactly an excuse, but even still, it just gives you a good idea of what Game Grumps itself is like. Anyways, I really do enjoy this album, and I recommend getting it if you're a fan of video game humor, video games in general, <laughs> dick jokes, um, and also check out Game Grumps uh, to get a better taste of what the people involved with this project are like. Anyways, that does it with this review. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video content. Um, I borrowed some content uh, from other animators who have taken, you know, their time to make animations for them, like basically music videos, animated music videos, and I will put links to each of those music videos that I used uh, in the um, description below so you can check them out for yourself because I want to give credit where credit is due, and they're all really, really well animated and very funny, so definitely check those out when you get the chance. Um, anyways, uh, if you want a song or albums to be reviewed that you may like or recommend, just leave a comment down below, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. But once again, thank you for watching, and so long.